Well, Democratic operatives are desperately trying to figure out why Latino voters in particular swung dramatically toward Donald Trump, despite historically voting for Democrats. And they're doing this after the election took place. Even though polls were indicating for over a year that this trend was happening, that the Democrats were bleeding support among Latino voters. So look, we'll get back to the very obvious underlying reason. Anna Kasparian has been distancing herself from the woke left for a while now, gradually shifting away from the Young Turks and inching toward more right wing perspectives. But since Donald Trump's recent win in the 2024 presidential election, Anna Kasparian seems to have fully snapped. In this latest video, she's not holding back, going scorched earth on the woke left. Anna Kasparian takes aim at both a CNN, or maybe MSNBC, host and Sunny Hosting from The View, calling out what she sees as absurd rhetoric following Trump's victory. Let's dive into this clip, where Anna Kasparian once again breaks down the left's response to the election and delivers a fiery critique. In just a second, but first, I think it's worth looking at um, these record-breaking numbers, okay? What the results of the election was, um, what the results were, I should say, uh, in regard to the Latino vote. So to take a look at this graphic. So it shows that the majority, around 53% of Latino voters still did vote for the Democratic candidate Kamala Harris in this election. But that is significantly lower than the 65% that voted for Joe Biden in 2020. So just bleeding support. Meanwhile, Trump did grow support from 32% to 45%, okay? Now, uh, Latino men in particular made a huge scene in 2020 and 2024. Uh, so let's take a look at that. In 2020, for instance, Joe Biden won among Latino men by 23 percentage points, 59% to Trump's 36%. Fast forward to 2024, and Trump won the Latino, uh, Latino men by about 10 points, 54% uh, to Kamala Harris's 44%. He also won among Latino voters overall in the state of Texas. Trump captured 55% of Latino voters in the state, according to exit polls. He also won 14 out of the 18 counties within 20 miles of the border, a number that doubled his 2020 performance in the Latino majority region. So why the huge swing? What's going on? Well. Some people like Sonny Hostin and uh, radio host Victor Martinez think that it has to do with identity. Let's take a look. Latinos in Texas, a, dis a district that's 97% Latino, went 75 percentage points for Donald Trump. Why? Misogyny. It's on the, no, that's it's why. on the border. It's the misogyny. border crisis is on their doorstep. So, so, and they were begging people to care about it for years. We need to take sexism. some less. That's what that was. And I will dare to say that is the Latino man who, will, who, who wouldn't want a woman president. I mean, you and I had this discussion before, um, and I have audios from um, Latino men who were calling in my show telling me that they wouldn't vote for her just because she was a woman. Um, and that is unfortunately, but that's part of the Latino culture, right? Where the, the Latino, the man is the one, the, the provider. If you're enjoying this type of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps. Now let's get back to the video. Uh, Martinez has no idea what he's talking about. Uh, some inconvenient facts for him. Uh, for instance, the fact that in 2016, Hillary Clinton won Latino men by a 31 point margin. Game over already, but wait till you see more. And uh, if you think it's mainly because of racism, that also doesn't quite jive with the fact that Latinos voted for Barack Obama over Mitt Romney 71% to Romney's 27%. What are we doing, Democrats? Like, what are you? They're they're gone, Jenk. They're gone. Like, so, un unable, unwilling to ever do even a little bit of self reflection. No. It, well, yesterday we showed you clips of these same people saying that Kamala Harris ran a flawless campaign. Flawless. Queen Latifah. <laughs> Queen Latifah was on her side, and normally Queen Latifah doesn't endorse people. Normally. Nevertheless, they ran this perfect campaign. I mean, she happened to lose. She happened to lose. But other than that, she got Queen Latifah. So uh, now these morons are saying, oh, I got a great idea for the next election. Why don't we punch our own voters in the face and smear them so they'll hate us even more? Okay, yeah. because that'll probably help us in the next election. I think that might be a better strategy than Kamala Harris's brilliant strategy of running with a neocon like Liz Cheney.
Let's see how it works out. It's just, yeah, look, I, I get it. I get that it's difficult to do self-reflection. I get that it's difficult to own up to mistakes, uh, misjudgments. I totally get that. Uh, with that said, no one is entitled to a damn thing, okay? No Democratic candidate is entitled to a damn thing thing. Even if the other guy is Satan himself, okay, the Democrat has to earn votes. And the fact that they feel so entitled, I mean, they feel so entitled that after losing the election, they're just lashing out at the electorate. That's all they've been doing. That is literally all I've seen from the Democratic Party. It's crazy. By the way, uh, look, I've said it on this show. I'm about to go and say it on other shows. Here's who I blame for the loss, Kamala Harris. Isn't that weird that almost no one on TV is saying that? Like literally saying the words out loud, Kamala Harris is at fault. You know why? Everyone on TV is craving access to the powerful or is personal friends with her or are such elites. They think the idea of criticizing the actual candidate is unthinkable, unthinkable. She's so important. She's a celebrity. She's famous. She's powerful. You can't just, that sounds outrageous to blame Kamala Harris. That's offensive. But blaming all Latino men not offensive. Interesting. The idea that Kamala Harris lost simply because she's a woman doesn't hold up. Historically, most societies, regardless of culture, have been led by male leaders. This isn't unique to Latino culture or any specific group. It's been a common feature across many civilizations, often by design. However, it's important to point out that Kamala Harris's loss doesn't come down to her gender. Her policies, public image, and overall performance were much bigger factors in the election result. There's also a sense of contradiction in how some democratic narratives are playing out. The party often promotes itself as the voice of individual freedoms, especially around my body, my choice issues, yet also sends a message that people should vote a certain way based on race, gender, or identity. This approach may end up alienating parts of their voter base especially if they continue to label those who didn't support Harris as racist or sexist. If Democrats don't adjust their messaging or strategies, it could create more disconnects within their base. It'll be interesting to see if they rethink their approach in the next few years. So, what are your thoughts? Has the left missed the mark with these narratives? Let me know in the comments, and if you're enjoying this breakdown, please like and subscribe.